do amplifiers have a preferred volume level? Great question. And it comes from Dean in London, England. And he writes, Paul, I'm a great fan of your videos. Thank you, Dean. That's very kind of you. And your podcasts. Um, he didn't say that, but I added it because we're, we're doing both podcasts and videos. So I had to give a little bit of a plug there. I've learned a lot from them. In fact, based on your advice, I've recently added a RHEL sub to my system, and I think it sounds amazing, even though my audiophile friends in Britain think I am mad. Good for you, Dean. Your rebel heart is right after my own. <laughs> and, and RHEL's a great subwoofer and a great company. Here's my question. Are amplifiers designed for and perform best at certain volumes? Hmm. The reason I ask is I live in a small terraced house, which means I have mostly uh, set my amp at below about a quarter volume. But when I can, I turn it up to closer to halfway, and the amp really sings. So are amps designed to best perform at certain volume levels? And does running an amp at low levels negatively impact performance? The truth of the matter is no. Amps are not designed to run at specific volume levels. When we design an amplifier, we design it to be li as linear as possible within any range that it's likely to cover. And in fact, the, the truth is, if you get above a certain level, there's a sweet spot somewhere, mm, I would say, about 10 to 20 percent over its lowest level that it's very linear, it'll sound as good as it's going to get, and then as you get into the higher levels, it'll start sounding compressed depending on the amplifier design. And that's one of the reasons, which we'll talk in, the, in a later uh, podcast, in a later video, about why a lot of wattage is a really good idea for headroom. But all that put aside, the fact is, at those low volume levels, the reason that it doesn't sound so good to you is something completely different than the amplifier design. And it has to do with something called the Fletcher-Munson curve. If you've never heard of the Fletcher-Munson curve, it was a study done by two guys, Fletcher and Munson, uh, if I recall, 1933. And what they found out was that perceived listening levels if, if, if you're asked to listen to a series of tones, of frequencies, from low to high, you, I, anybody listening, will perceive the volume level lower and higher at certain frequencies than others. Now this is interesting because imagine that we've got a set of tones. Let's say we're going to do 60 hertz, to, oh, I don't know, 3 kilohertz, or uh, let's go up to 20 kilohertz. And, as I and each of these tones is at a specific steady level, 0 dB. Pick anything you want. But all of the tones are technically exactly the same loudness level. Well, depending on how loud the signal is, if it's at a fairly low volume level, then, but they're all the same. As we play different frequencies, our brains tell us that those frequencies are not even in their loudness. In particular, as the frequency extremes fall off to the top and to the bottom of the range, it sounds as if those low frequencies and those high frequencies are at lower volume levels. Only when we can turn the sound of the presentation up that we hear them as even tones. So this was really interesting. And they had originally done, in 1933, of course, there was no such thing as, as high-end audio. There was barely audio at all. There were uh, monaural speakers, and they were, I think they were more concerned about telephones and, and reproduction of sound over wires, et cetera. But their research basically showed that at, at, at fairly moderate levels, our ability to perceive steady state tones of, of, of loudness is very much dependent on the actual loudness of those tones, not relative to others, 
but relative to a certain threshold which they described. So what does this all mean? Well, it means that when you play something at low level, like uh, Dean did, the bass and the treble are going to sound as if they are rolled off. It's going to sound like there's less bass and less treble. So what do we do? Well, in those cases, we'd want to equalize by turning up those frequencies relative to the other frequencies so that they are actually higher and they sound flat. If you've ever seen a loudness control on a stereo system or a receiver, a lot of receivers have those, that's what that's for. That's what it does. When you push that loudness button, it tilts up the bass and it tilts up the top end relative to where the volume control is. And a well-designed loudness button will reduce its impact on those frequencies and start bringing them down as the volume gets lower so that when you're at reasonable listening levels, that loudness control is out of the circuit altogether. And as you turn the volume down, it starts pumping back up the bass and the treble. So that is what you're hearing. And as you crank that sucker up, you get rid of the problem of no bass and no highs, and that's why your system comes alive. Hope that helps answer your question. Thanks for asking it. I'll talk to you later.